Hello and welcome to this introduction into how to use Catalyst. Catalyst, for those of you that don't know, is a media controller uh, for use within theatre, rock shows, opera, TV and installations. So the first thing we've done is we've downloaded um, the latest version of Catalyst from the samc-pm.com website and we can see it here. Uh, this particular version is version 4.2 and it's build 257. So before we go ahead and launch that, let's just have a look at some of the hardware we need in order to run Catalyst. So Catalyst uh, will only work on the Mac operating system. Uh, this particular one we're using today is um, a Tiger system. So let's just have a look at what we've got here. So we're we're running 10.4.11 and we're also running a dual core 3 gigahertz processor and we've got 4 gig of RAM installed. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got in our content drive. So let's open up this SSD drive here. Now you'll see here we've got three folders. Each one of these folders represents a different show. Let's have a look in demo show and you'll see that we've then got another set of folders. This represents the, the library that our content will sit in and you'll see that each folder has a unique number and it's this number that Catalyst will look for. And if we look inside each one of those folders then the file itself has a three digit number as well. So these two numbers two sets of numbers are very important because that's how we tell Catalyst which file we want. So let's just close that back on up. Okay, so one last thing before we launch Catalyst is we're just going to put the Catalyst application somewhere. We can have multiple instances of Catalyst installed on our machine. So I'm just going to create a folder and I'm going to call it demo show and I'm going to drag the Catalyst application into that show. I could have another folder that was show number two and have another copy of Catalyst in there. And we'll see why we put them into these folders in a little bit. But let's go ahead and launch Catalyst. Okay, so this is what Catalyst looks like the first time that we launch it. The first thing we can do is to close these two output windows. These are a bit of a leftover from version 3. So the first thing we should do is just take a little tour around the interface. So we can see here that we have the Catalyst control window. And if we work our way down, there's some information here. It tells us what our IP address is. We can choose what type of disk we have. Uh, we've got an SSD. If we had a SCSI drive, we'd uh, select fast. So SSD and SCSI would be fast. Anything that's on a SATA or an IDE drive would be a slower disk. We can set our um, frames per second. Down here, we get our two outputs. Now, this refers to our two DVI, or there might be VGA outputs. In my case, they're, they're DVI. This tells us the resolution uh, that they're running at. And we've got various options as to what we get out of those outputs. But we'll come back to that in a second. If you're using a Catalyst interface board, uh, you should see it connected in there. Uh, and because we can control Catalyst from a lighting console, this is where we would do our DMX patch. Now Catalyst can also control other external devices or be controlled by other external devices. And in here we can see we can output MIDI machine control commands 
we can send out MIDI show control commands we can be triggered by MIDI show control commands we can attach MIDI controllers in this section here we can output MIDI notes, program changes and control changes uh, we can be have any function of Catalyst be triggered by MIDI in this section here we can control Pioneer DVD players and Sony 42 players as well and we can control video switches we can also be controlled by Catalyst's inbuilt web server we can run Apple scripts we can control uh, pan tilt zoom cameras such as the Sony D70 or the Sony VRC300 and we can output custom serial commands and we can also chase MIDI timecode so that's all the devices that can be controlled by Catalyst what need to do really is to tell Catalyst where to look for our content and we do that in the library window we go to the folders tab and we select a slot and select where the content is so you notice I'm pointing at the root folder here so everything that's within that folder is what Catalyst will look for and it's looking for these three digit numbers and then what's inside those folders so we'll choose that and we tell Catalyst to scan those files so it can go and look at what's in there and what it will do is it will go and create some thumbnails for us and they appear in our documents folder under under Catalyst documents images and there's some thumbnail views of what content we have on our system let's just close that go back into Catalyst